Welcome to our ultimate visual guide for understanding Photoshop's blend modes. Now, blend modes, they are an incredibly powerful function here inside of Photoshop, and we're going to be using them a lot when it comes to creating composite images. And you can think of texturing, which is what we're going to be doing this series, as a type of compositing, because it is. It's a simple type of compositing, but basically what we're doing is we're adding textures over an existing image, and we're blending them to come up with a composite image. Now, to do that, or at least to not waste a lot of time when doing this, it's important to understand blend modes. And if you go on Online and you search blend modes, well, you're going to come up with a million different resources, and a lot of them, at least most of them, are going to be very technical. Some of them even get into the math and the calculations of what's going on. And you know what? We really don't need to have that level of understanding to be able to utilize blend modes and be able to get great images out of them. If you want to, you can, but uh, that's not what we're going to do. So, what we have here is a visual guide to kind of understanding them. You'll find that they're very simple and intuitive once you kind of understand the organization and the way that they work. Let's go ahead and look up our files. Now I have image number four here. This is from our exercise file folder. And what I've done is just applied a couple of effects to it using the preset system and then loaded it into Photoshop. Now you don't have to do anything to it. If you want to just watch this video, you can. If you want to follow along with an image of your own or just load this image without any effects, that's totally fine as well. Uh, beyond this, when we go through and we actually create our finished images, we will be showing you from start to finish kind of the processing in the raw side all the way through to the Photoshop texturing. But for this one, this is just for illustrative purposes. Let's go back to bridge and from the exercise file folder as well we're going to grab this white to black chart.jpg and we're just going to drag this into photoshop now once it's in place i get this little bounding box so what we're going to do is just expand it to fit our little working area okay i'm holding down alt and shift by the way or if you're on a mac it's option shift and what that does is it constrains the proportion so that it just expands from the center and it holds the same aspect ratio once it's in place we're going to hit enter just to save that little setting there and uh, i move my working space so i'm going to hit control zero or command zero just to center me back up all right so what we have here is just a, a white to black chart showing pure white here on the left then 25% gray, 50% gray, 75% gray, and then 100%, uh, which would be black. All right, so what we're going to do is flip through each of these blend modes. Now, you can access the blend modes just right above your actual layers. We have this normal pull down right here, and this is in the layers tab, okay? So we're going to go to the normal pull down, and we see here that we have six groupings of different blend modes. Now, don't get kind of confused or intimidated. This is where most people go, oh my gosh, there's so many blend modes, I don't know what to choose from. It's actually done in a very intuitive manner. So we we have six groupings. The top two groupings are our normal groupings. So these are these are basically normal blend modes. I'm going to show you exactly what they do in just a moment. The next set is a darkening grouping. So all these effects here are going to darken our image. The next grouping is our lighten effects. These are all going to lighten the image in different ways. Then we have our contrast grouping. Okay, so in the contrast grouping, it's going to add or boost contrast in the underlying layer using these different types of blend modes. Then we have basically what you could call the inversion or cancellation modes. These are creative blend modes that do really extreme things that we're typically not going to be using for texturing. So for the most part, you can kind of throw those out. Below that, we have our component grouping where we're basically blending in certain components of an image from hue to saturation and color over to brightness. So luminosity, basically. Okay, so that way, what we're doing here is when we choose a blend mode, we're choosing basically how we want the selected layer to affect the layer below it. So like I said, if we go to the normal and we select that, if I go and drag down opacity at 100%, obviously we're seeing 100% of this over uh, top layer and we can't see anything underneath it. But as I drag opacity back, you can see that basically it's just pulling the transparency down of this uh, overriding layer. But it's not actually affecting the pixels below it. It looks like it is because, well, we're, we're basically making it more transparent, but it isn't blending it with the layer below. So this is essentially how the normal blend mode works. And don't get me wrong, it's just because it's not blending with the layer below, it doesn't mean that it's not effective. We actually still use this uh, for a lot of texturing purposes and a lot of compositing purposes. Next, we have dissolve. And what dissolve is going to do is basically from 100%, it's going to dissolve or granulate uh, the image until it basically completely disappears. Now, this might, uh, I actually always ask myself, why is this considered normal or why is it in the normal grouping? I don't know. I don't know why they put it there. Maybe they just didn't want to create another set, but it actually is quite useful for creating these little granulation effects. So you can see over here, it actually looks pretty decent with these white specks over the background. It looks like kind of a worn and, and kind of dusty image that was maybe scanned or something. We can use it to that effect for our texturing. So it actually is kind of useful at times. Below this, we have darken. So let's go ahead and bring opacity back up to 100%. Let's go to darken. Now darken, notice what it does here. 
if I flip from darken to multiply to color burn and just keep going down or up through the uh, listing here, any of these five are not going to affect the image when the overriding layer, when the layer that we have selected is white. So this white area right here just basically becomes transparent. But the other areas do affect the image, okay? So white is essentially our neutral point with any of the darkens because if it is white, then there's nothing to darken. Basically, that's a neutral tone. And real quick, one quick way that you guys can cycle through the different uh, blend modes is while you have this little uh, selection tool selected, if you don't just hit V on your keyboard, it'll automatically select it. You can hit Shift plus or Shift minus. So hitting Shift plus will actually move you down through the list. Shift minus will move you back to the top of the list, okay? So on darken, we're basically getting this darkening effect where it's essentially just adding these tones or adding these colors to the image below it. At 100%, it's not that useful, but when you back it off, it actually has a pretty decent look where it's essentially just fading off and darkening the image below it. So if we use darken, we're generally using it at a lower opacity. Now let's go down to multiply. Multiply kind of has this effect where it's basically adding or combining the uh, luminosity and the contrast levels of the top layer with the bottom one. It makes it actually a very useful uh, blend mode that we're gonna be frequently using. But you can see here, it's essentially darkening and we also get a little bit of this kind of graying out effect with these tones. It'll work a little bit differently when you add textures. But once again, white is our neutral point. When we go down from here to color burn, we can see that we're darkening, but it's doing it in a different way. It's doing it with additional contrast and with burning the colors down. Okay, so we get a very high contrast burned look with this color burn. And you can see over on the black side, it drops to complete black, but anywhere in between is basically darkening. Again, this is one of those effects that if you're using the color burn, you're generally going to back it off quite a bit so it doesn't create a very hard look to the image. Okay, next we have linear burn. Again, this is another great darkening effect that uh, sort of washes out the image. It's another one that we frequently use. And then we have darker color. This is one that I'm typically not using so much, but we can go to 100%. You can see how darker color is essentially just dropping or adding those grays to the image. And uh, it really is not looking that great. So what's happening is, is wherever it sees lighter colors, it's going to darken with the overriding layer over here because this uh, layer above is white. It doesn't show through. So those are all darkening effects in this grouping. Now let's go down to lighten. Okay, so on lighten, notice that the blacks actually become our neutral point. So anything on the blacks are not affecting the underlying layer. Anything that is actually brighter on the layer that we have selected is going to lighten the layer that we have beneath it. So you'll see that white goes to pure white. This 25% gray adds a little bit, but at 50% gray, it almost completely disappears. We can see a little bit down here, and that's because the underlying image itself is quite bright. So the underlying image itself is is above 50% gray throughout the entire image, which means that anything below this point isn't gonna show up. So from that, hopefully you can see that based on the layer that's below, the lighten and darken blend modes are gonna work a little bit differently. Now let's go ahead and flip this over to screen and notice that what you have here is a mirror opposite. So darken becomes lighten over here. Multiply becomes screen. Color burn becomes color dodge. They're exact mirror opposites, okay? So under screen, now we can see these different tones. So over here in the black, this is still our neutral point. If we click it on and off, we can see that it's not affecting the image below. Over here at 75%, you can see that it's still brightening. And with that brighten, we kind of get a subtle fade to it. Going over to 50, 25, and then to white where it becomes pure white, you can see that it's bright brightening and also fading or washing out the image. It's a great actual effect for creating that kind of faded and tattered look or the faded and worn look that you might want with a texture. It's actually very uh, often used, or at least I often use it. All right, so let's go on to color dodge. Now color dodge is gonna be the exact opposite of color burn, okay? So color burn, we're darkening, adding a lot of contrast in the colors, okay? Color dodge, we're doing the exact opposite. We're brightening and adding a lot of contrast in the colors. Again, these are generally gonna be very powerful effects. You wanna dial them down down uh, if you're going to use them at all. Okay, let's go down to linear dodge and linear dodge again has a similar effect, but it's going to affect it the colors just a bit differently. In color dodge, it's going to have a much more kind of strong contrasty effect as opposed to linear dodge. So color dodge, you kind of get this higher contrast look in these uh, areas as opposed to linear dodge, it's more flat. Okay, going down, we have lighter color. Now, all of these in this grouping basically made black our neutral point. So at 100%, Black is our neutral, and as we flip through, I'm gonna go ahead and use my uh, shortcuts just to flip through instead of clicking. Okay, so as we flip through here, you can see that black is always staying neutral in the lighter color, linear dodge, color dodge screen, and lighten. All right, everything else is gonna basically lighten the image in different ways. Some are gonna add contrast, some will keep it more flat. All right, going down from there, we have our overlay modes. Now in the overlay modes, our 50% gray point, that's actually gonna be the neutral point now. Now I think on our image that I created, let's go ahead and flip through, uh, I'm gonna hit 
control uh, plus to flip down through. Yeah, it is affecting the image a tiny, tiny bit. And that means that the gray wasn't 100% gray. Let me show you just to, uh, as an example, let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna hold down shift backspace and it's gonna bring up my fill dialog box. I'm gonna fill it with 50% gray from this menu right here and hit okay. Now, I'm gonna make this uh, white to black chart just invisible so we only see these two layers. And what we're gonna do here is flip down to an overlay mode. Now, like I said, the neutral gray or 50% gray inside of Photoshop is gonna be invisible. It's gonna be neutral with any of these contrast modes. So when I select this, we actually see that we're not affecting the uh, layer below with any of the contrast modes. I can flip to any of these and it's not doing anything. I can turn it on and off and it's not doing anything. That is our neutral point, okay? So let's go ahead and throw this away real fast. Let's click on our white to black chart and uh, I'm going to go ahead and it's actually at 100% opacity right now. So if we flip down through this, this neutral point is gray and anything brighter than gray is going to brighten the image while adding contrast. Anything darker is going to darken the image while adding contrast as well. Now, each of these blend modes work a little bit differently. So overlay is going to be kind of a harder effect than say a soft light effect, which is going to be a much more subtle boost. But you can see over here that we're kind of fading it over here on the white side, whereas over here on the right side, we're adding these additional tones and color and it's adding contrast to it okay so going to hard light again this is something that you want to definitely back off if you're gonna be using hard light you don't want it to be super strong usually you want to drop the opacity on hard light we do see black and white completely uh, but anywhere in between and 50% gray is neutral and then anywhere in between is basically going to lighten or darken the image while adding a little bit of contrast to it as well vivid light adds a lot more contrast so you can see much more contrast than the hard or the soft light Going down to linear light, again, a different variation on the vivid light, okay? And then going down to pin light and hard mix, these, again, are gonna be adding colors in a way that we typically aren't gonna be using. So generally, we're not using those ones. All right, so these are the contrast modes. All right, so we've talked about the darken modes, the lighten modes, our contrast modes. Next, we have the difference, or you can call these essentially inversion or cancellation modes, where basically based on the color, it's gonna either invert the layer below or it's gonna cancel out the layer below. We're typically not using these. So if I flip from inversion to exclusion to subtract to uh, divide, these are generally modes that we're not often using, at least not in texturing, okay? You might use them for other purposes, but for texturing, we're seldomly using these creative modes. Next, we have hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. Now, if I select these, you're gonna notice something very interesting happens. It goes to black and white. Why is that? Well, because the overriding layer, this layer that we have on top, has no color inside of it. And so we're not getting any of the brightness tones, we're not getting anything except for the actual color tone. And because the color tone is black and white, with the first three layers, we don't see any changes. So hue, saturation, and color, we don't see any changes to the layer below it. But if I flip down to luminosity, now we see luminosity levels are actually being affected on the layer below. And it might not be affecting it in the way that you think it would. It's actually affecting it based on brightness levels. So it's essentially just changing the brightness levels of the layers below to these even tones. And that's why it has this very strange look here. So what we see is basically the uh, all of our luminosity, all of our brightness details been lost. We're just left with a little bit of color over the top of it. And again, it's not typically a mode that I'm using that much, but the color modes are actually pretty useful, especially if you want to add, say, colors from uh, a certain texture onto a, an image below it. So it actually comes quite useful in that case. All right, let's go ahead and flip back to normal. That is our white to black chart. That's understanding blend modes. Blend modes are incredibly powerful, guys, and I want you to you know take this file and, and go try it on your own just so you guys can understand it even better. So once again, let's flip through and just talk about the ones that we use the most. Now in our normal modes, I'm typically using normal the most if I am gonna use one of these two. If I wanna create a granulated effect, I sometimes use dissolve and maybe invert it as well. Now in the darken, I like to use multiply, color burn, and linear burn. Now color burn and linear burn, I generally use at a much lighter opacity. Uh, multiply is actually a very great look to just kind of darken and add texture to uh, another underlying texture or image below it. In the lighten grouping, I'm frequently using lighten, screen, color dodge, and linear dodge. Now with color dodge and linear as well as lighten, I'm typically adjusting the opacity quite a bit. They're usually very low, whereas with screen, they're usually a little bit higher. Definitely multiply and screen are the two frequently most used ones in the darken and the lighten blending modes. Going down, we have the uh, overlay or the contrast modes. Now in the contrast modes, a lot of them are very, very useful. So overlay is very useful, soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light. Again, anything beyond basically overlay and soft light, you're gonna really need to adjust opacity because there might be too strong. Even overlay itself is sometimes too strong as well. So soft light is generally usually very mild and you don't need to do too much adjusting there, but these are all great 
rate uh, blending modes. I'm not using pin light and hard mix that much. Generally not using any of these creative uh, inversion cancellation modes. And typically if I'm using the color modes, it's gonna be either color and generally I'm not using luminosity. So typically I only stick with color uh, to kind of affect the layers below it. All right, so that's it for my favorite blending modes when it comes to texturing, the ones that I frequently use. Hopefully this visual guide helps you in understanding blend modes. Let's head on now to the next video.